So today we're on our journey again and uh, we're in Maidenhead and we have a, a guest joining us, Cash, and I'll let Cash do the introduction. Hi, oh, yeah. so I'm Cash, I live in Maidenhead, been here for a very, very long time, uh, work up in the city uh, in asset management, so this is the perfect location uh, for to live because of the easy commute into London. Uh, but also like the airports, both Gatwick and Heathrow are within close, close proximity. So Heathrow is around 30 minutes drive. It's about actually 15. Okay. Yeah, 15 to T5. And Gatwick and Luton's around? Well, I've never been to Luton, but Gatwick's about 45 minutes. So it must be the same for Luton then. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. similar way the other way around. Yeah. And getting into Liverpool Street takes me 45 minutes on the Elizabeth line or Paddington. You can be there in 20 minutes. So you lived here how long? So we moved into the we moved into Bray back in eighty six. Wow, that is a long time. Um, and we were attracted. My mother was attracted to the river, River Thames, the hotels, the restaurants. So this is our local airfield, private private members club. So what made you otherwise? Is it just the scenery and the river views and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's green. Here? It's green. Okay. Uh, you know, you're like I said, within you're far away from London, but at the same time, you're not too far away. Yeah. Um, and the pace of life is very slow. So it's slower than London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, you get more value from a property. Well, yeah. the properties I've seen, you can, they're between four to eight million for the river views. Yeah. Then they're around the two million for the detached and the semi-detached, which yeah. is still large yeah. houses yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But they do go all the way down to apartments, which are about 100,000. Yeah, so there's going to be like, you know, the sort of older apartments, uh, so, you know, we just passed a house that was more like 10 million. Right, okay. Yeah, so a farmhouse, a manor actually. Uh, there's another house nearby here that was for, on sale for 30 million. So there is something higher. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I didn't, so, okay. So near left here. So you have the equestrian side and you have the river yeah. side as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is where, all the, sort of, uh, where we are right now, a lot of farmhouses. So you can see the church and there's lots of schools here as well. Yeah, so the schools are very good. So we have a lot of outstanding schools, a mixture of state outstanding schools and grammar schools. Uh, and obviously Eton's just down the road, right, Eton okay. College. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, How far is Eton? It's about, for my house, five minutes drive, five, ten minutes drive. Really? So yeah, that yeah. is a very good catchment for exactly, yeah. reason for the properties around here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but it's just the country lanes, so you know, this area. So this is, this can, from here we can go to Ascot. Yeah. And also okay. winter. So down these country lanes. So well, everything's within easy reach. Yeah, I like a walk to Ascot yeah. as well. So my walk these are my my walking routes as well. Mm. So I do a lot of walking in my you know, outside of work. Um, it's good, you can just be in the countryside. Just a bit down there. So it's peaceful. Yeah. You can go for your walks and you've got great scenery within minutes actually. Yeah, yeah. And if I need to be in London? I can be there very quickly as well. well down with the Elizabeth airport. Line, it's quite good now. If you obviously, if you take the Elizabeth Line, yeah, or you can take the, the car. Have you been on the Elizabeth Line? Do you know how long it is to get to London from there? Let's put it this way: it takes me fifty-five minutes to get to Canary Wharf. Right. Okay. Yeah. Without changing any trains. Yeah. Uh, so I've been to quite a few concerts recently to the O2 since the Lizzie Line. Mm. Uh, before it would be a nightmare driving. Yeah. You, know, you could drive into London and get out of London again. Uh, two hours, right? So now I can be in O2 within one hour. 10 minutes. Great, okay. That's entering OT. Yeah. Uh, so it's perfect, it's perfect. Like I said, Liverpool Street, where I get off at, when I go to the office, is 45 minutes. Right, okay. So, and then so it's a very service. convenient place, and it's worth people seeing this area because obviously, when they're used to London, but they're not used to the sort of suburbs, and um, this is very convenient. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and yeah, just around these old fields. And so, the sun's coming out as well. Yeah, there you go. You see, you've now arrived into a, what I call Sleepy Maidenhead, but it's uh, yeah, Sunny Maidenhead now. So, okay. uh, uh, so why I say Sleepy Maidenhead? Because um, a lot of the nice places around here, they, they go to sleep or they, you know, on Sunday they stop operating yeah. and they reopen their businesses on the Wednesday. Oh, right, so, okay. So it gives the staff some time to yeah. sort of uh, relax as well. Um, but weekend-wise, you still can do your shopping and yeah, restaurants yeah, and pubs yeah, and things yeah. like that. And to be honest, this is not really a shopping town. Yeah. We don't want it to be a shopping town. Mm. If you want shops, you can go to Windsor, yeah. go to Reading. Okay. Uh, but actually, we, we all, most of the people that I know that live here will go to Westfield. Right. Okay. It's very easy to get to. 
Yeah. So again, down the M4, uh, you're in London very, very quickly, and you're in, you know in uh, Westfield. Um, and the family is very happy being here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing is, the next step from here would be somewhere like the Cotswolds. Yeah. But that's quite way far. too far away. Exactly. So the, for me, this is like the best of sort of like a sleepy village, sleepy area, but oh. at the same time, you can be within close proximity of London. Yeah. Um, and we even have a Soho house here as well. So. That's why I had Soho River House, they that's call right. it. Correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, obviously Soho House is a members club. Yep. It's quite global now. Yep. And it's one of the biggest ones I think there is. Mm -hmm. So you can obviously, if you join here, if you join all the clubs, you can have the London one. Yep, yep. And the others around the world. Correct. And for them to be here must mean something. That's right. So when I'm there, about 99% of the people are all London members. Right, okay. Yeah. So uh, so they come because it's closer than farmhouse. Mm. Um, and you just got We're amazing left. left, yeah. So you've got amazing views of the river. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so House is here as well, yeah. Yeah, it's very green. It's very, there's not much traffic from what I can see, considering it is a Saturday. Yeah, nobody can speed down here. Not that shocking to that, but yeah. So it's the polo. <laughs> so this is all where oh, the your polo, polo fields are here. Also here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a good place for people to go cycling as well, road racing. Yeah. So, um, so you'd see a lot of cyclists out and about here. But um, yeah, so this is on this road is where we have a property that was sell for 30 million. Right. And okay. Tom Cruise was staying there when he was filming Mission oh, Impossible. Really? But it's all very, very hush hush when he was staying around here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I heard he was he was walking around, wasn't he? And he's he might have been, but uh, yeah. But I have friends who had spotted him. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and but yeah, so he was renting the house. It's good enough for him. Then this area is good enough for anyone. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's the good thing about being a buying agent. We're not linked to particular houses that we're instructed on. We obviously help clients look for properties from all agents and just find the right area for them. And getting your knowledge on this area is exactly what we're looking for because yeah. it gives a real view rather than just an agent's point of view. Yeah. Because you live here. That's right, yeah. And you work in the city, so. That's right. And I socialize in London and also here. So because this is, uh, the area is uh, Mecca for foodies. Yeah. There's actually no need for me to go to London to go dine. It has to be something exceptional. What's your favorite, what sort of cuisines do you have? Though? You know, what sort of cuisines are you into yourself? Um, Misha. I don't really you know, have no preference. Okay. Um, but we have you know we have we have about ten mission stars just here. Really? Okay. Yeah. So uh, you have you know you've got what uh, the Rue brothers. Yeah. Uh, Alan Rue's establishments. You have um, Hester Blumenthal. Right. Okay. Who also happens to be a member at Soho House, so I see him quite a lot. And also you have a Tom Perridge in Marlow. So everyone's here. Yeah. yeah. And you've got the five field. Polo club yeah. here. Yeah, it's all around us actually, the the, the, uh, the clubs. So we're now sort of heading towards Windsor. Yeah. Well, we won't be in Windsor, we'll still be in Maidenhead. Uh, and at the end of the road, we'll do a left. But from here, the motorway is not too far, M4. Okay. Just to put it in perspective, yeah. we're talking about another five minutes drive from here. So very easy to get to the M4. So would you ever move back to London, or would you ever move to London? No. There's absolutely no need for me, even though, like I said, my party there. Yeah. And I can get an Uber. So from Portman Square, you know, on a Saturday night, you're talking about 70, 80 pounds. It's not too bad. It's too bad in the grand scheme of things, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Which you've probably done many times. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I can't be bothered to get a train at that time of the night. Yeah. So. Um, but when did the Elizabeth Line open? That Elizabeth Line opened a good few years ago. So around the COVID, during COVID, actually, because there were delays yeah. in it opening. Um, and they had some problems signaling issues, but even before we have, you know, we have a very good line. So we've got the first Great Western, mm. and that first fast train gets you into Paddington in eighteen minutes. Right, so you okay. can switch yeah, across, yeah. you know. So still, mm. before then, I was to go to Liverpool Street, it still take me about fifty minutes. Yeah. But then I have to change underground and all that stuff. It just now it just easier. takes you straight through. We also got like Cleveland House. So all of the all of the nice places around the world got history. Yeah. So it's not just that they just, you know, popped and, up and you know were built. There's royal history. There's a lot of royal connections here. Yeah. Um, and obviously the royal family do live in uh, Windsor. Uh, Prince William lives nearby here as well. Um, You've not bumped into him yet? I've not bumped into him, uh, but friends have. Okay. Uh, at school, so, you know, swimming, um, you know, where there's competitions mm. between schools. And yeah, next to my friend was Kate. 
She was sat next right, to him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't realise because she was sort of dressed down. Yeah. Yeah, so just on your right, you'll be Windsor. Okay. Which we'll probably cover in another, yeah. another episode. Yeah. And there was some Spice Girl connection and some Harry Potter connection as well. Yeah, yeah. So this is the Windsor Road. This takes you to Windsor and Maidenhead, so we're somewhere in the middle. We also have a film studio here, uh, Bray Studios, which is coming up on your right hand side, which Amazon are buying. Okay. Then, then the press are purchasing this. This is where they filmed the uh, Lord of the Rings, recent Lord of the Rings uh, series in uh, on Amazon. So oh, yes, okay. you've got Bray Studios here as well. But they did shoot uh, Masters of the Air, which is on Apple TV uh, about two, three years ago. It was only came out, it was only released last year. Yeah. Um, and, and that was Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. Oh, so okay. they, they so filmed some of, of it in Bray. Yeah. yeah, so they filmed a little bit in Bray. And you've got your main shops here as well, like Sainsbury's. Yeah, you've got your Sainsbury's, Waitrose, yeah. you know, uh, you've got um, you know, Marks and Spencer's and Boots. But typically, you know, the town centre is not a traditional town centre anymore. Mm. It's been redeveloped uh, because a lot of internet shopping happens. And we don't really want to be, a, as I said before, a, a, a shopping town. That's a good thing, right? So the money is here, but yeah. it gets, uh, you know, people go to like, but in fact, I'm going there tomorrow to Westfield just to buy something. So yeah, so this is more a residential. Yeah. Uh, and what, what council is it here or borough? This is the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. Okay. So uh, our MP was Theresa May, the former okay. Prime Minister. Yeah. So I used to see it quite a lot, driving the entourage of at police escort right, okay. on a Monday morning. And what's it Again, currently? Uh, now it's now it's Liberal, so it's switched to Liberal for the first time oh, okay. uh, in a very long time. Um, but that's to be expected. So this is where we first moved to this area. Um, prior to that, and the reason why we moved out of here was because the river, it was prone to flooding. Right, okay. Yeah. But they've made some changes now. That's correct. So we now have the uh, Jubilee uh, Relief River. Yeah that was open in 2001 and now flooding takes place upstream okay right so like Cookham and all those places yeah. and Reading and above mm. with uh, Oxford and downstream from Windsor onwards yeah. and made head is safe I wonder so why they made that decision well I know so that people don't decision, like us people don't like us downstream and they don't like us upstream yeah yeah uh, but all the house all the properties now on the River Thames mm. are safe yeah right and we had a lot of river rainfall over the winter last year autumn winter and the river was flowing, flowing really quickly, but it was diverted at midnight. So not a single property had water encroaching on its gardens. So that's good to know. Yeah. So this is another place where we stay. Yeah. You, know, you know, we live around here because this area would have been flooded in the past. Yeah. So it's a nice little village. Yes. Yeah, so this is Bray. Uh, the church in front of us is where Lord Mountbatten's or Prince Philip's uh, uncle's buried. Very famous, yeah. Mountbatten. So this is a very this is one of my local pubs, The Crown. It used to okay. be owned by Heston Blumenthal. So, so this the is, food there is what type of food? Uh, just typical traditional English pub food. Okay. But very good. In front of us is Heinz Head, where Prince Philip had his stag do. Oh, really? But it's owned by Heston Blumenthal. So okay. that's a, a mission starred um, gastro pub. This is probably one of the most famous villages in the UK, Bray. So basically, where that car is going, that's where the Three Mission Star restaurant since 1983, I believe. Waterside Inn, a lot of celebrities come down here. Great, we'll have to visit one day. With the first Three Mission Star restaurant outside of France. Oh, really? Waterside Inn okay. here, yeah. But yeah, so this is the River Thames, is right in front of us. Okay. And these are the taxi cabs, which are the white and the purple. Yeah, these are the Royal Borough ones, but you also have Uber, you've got Bolt, you've got your know, normal cabs as well. Yeah. So Uber, getting Uber is not a problem at all. It takes me sometimes just five minutes to get an Uber. And this is very famous, right. the Fat Duck, right? Fat Duck is just around the corner, okay. it's next to us. So that's behind the Fat Duck yeah. is Waterside Inn. And this one you right here is the Fat Duck, just here, right here. Wow, okay. Yeah. So everything is here. Yeah. And I've never been to any of these. Yeah, so this is my locals. Right, okay. This is the, we came up to Cricket Club where I used to play cricket. So again, just here's the properties were for sale for about 8 million. This one here, yeah. almost for 8 million. It's the cricket club that Michael Parkinson was the president of. So I used to okay. play a lot here. It's a helicopter there you can see. And did there for the fact that. 
So the fact that lands a helicopter's there and yeah, yeah, and what's that? Yeah, just, just keep that. So not a bad thing to do. So this is where the most multi-millionaires at one point used to live. You know, actually, I think in, in, in the Woolwich villages. So they around call there, it Avenue yeah. Road as well. Yeah. So this is the fisheries famous. We've got a map to show you where all people's houses are. That's nice. Okay. Yeah. So all these houses are now protected by actually maiden hairs because of the relief. Otherwise, this would all have been underwater. So they're very happy now. Their values have gone up. Yeah, exactly. Now you have to worry about insurance either, yeah. premiums or anything like that. Uh, a lot of the houses were built on stilts as well. The newer houses aren't because they're not protected. Um, Michael Parkinson used to live here. Uh, Terry Rogan used to live nearby. Oh, okay. So uh, Rolf Harris was live <laughs> well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I said it the better, yeah. but he lived around here as well, two doors away from Michael Parkinson. So a celebrity in catchment area. Yeah, yeah. Carol Walderman lives around here. Tom Dean, the swimmer, Olympic swimmer, he lives around here as well. Let's do right down here. So you've got modern buildings like the one on the left. Yeah, that was recently re yeah, they're not the house and rebuilt. So and the river's just here on your left. So their views must be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we've got like boats on the other side. It's quite hidden away, but it's still quite direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, people mostly now, when we moved here, it was old money. Yeah. Over the years, it's changed. Still old money, but you have um, new wealth coming in. First, the telecoms people that started, and now the city workers. Okay. So the dynamics are changing. But is it still young families, old families, or just young? Mixture, or? mixture, yeah. This is Michael Parkinson's house. Yeah. Should we go around this way? Yeah, in the round town. Okay. This is where Gerald Ratner used to live. That's a really nice house. Yeah. Okay. And, it's an indoor mount, and on your right hand side was where Gerald Ratner, yep. Ratner Julius, yep. used to live here. So, yeah. But yeah, it's a mixture of people now. So it's not old, old people, but mm. you have obviously a lot of wealth uh, mixing with new wealth as well. So this is a bath road, the famous bath road. Right, okay, so all the hotels and the. If you go that way, Behind us, you'll end up in Bath, and straight ahead, we'll end up in London if you continue down this road. This is the river, yeah, above. Uh, and we'll do a left where that car's gone. So, this is a really new development, recent development. This left. Yeah, left here, yeah. Riverside development. So, where you were talking about the four million pound houses, they're here on the riverside. They're wow, okay. all connected to each other, but yeah. they're really expensive. Because I haven't seen any m many developments around here, so yeah. So these are all new. A lot of people from London have moved here. So you get the slower pace of life, but still be close to London. Yeah, yeah. And I can see why. It's a real lifestyle change. Yeah, exactly. So these are some of the apartments that have been bought up by people from London that work up in the city. Okay. Take a right. Yeah, and just do a run. And that's the Jubilee River there. Okay. And that's what's protecting Maidenhead now. Yeah. From the flooding that we used to get before. So that's owned by Anan Roo or Michelle Roo, which has by a go cocktailing. Okay. Uh, Skindles, which is steeped in history as well. So a lot of, uh, in the old days, a lot of uh, people used to have a lot of their meeting the mistresses here. Oh, really? <laughs> so we just went from there. You see the houses over there. Yeah. That's the views right from the river. Right. So they can dock their own yep. yachts up there. Yep. Up to a certain size. size. Correct. A lot of them are moored in uh, Windsor. Uh, if we've got and actually Bray Marina and Windsor Marina. So that's where they there's, there's where people keep their yachts. And how far are we from Henley? Henley's <clears> a, from here because of the roads is about ten minutes drive. So everything's really close proximity. Yeah. 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 This is the famous Bolter's Lock. So often, often watch the people boats you know, waiting to go across. Is it still manually operated lock or a automatic one now? It's automatic. 
And the other thing is that their homes around here, as soon as they go on sale, they get snapped up really quickly. Mm. So typically, even you know where we live, the house goes goes on sale, and the following week is sold. Yeah. Uh, so when my son went to school, was like the top primary school in the country. And what? So there was a school? waiting list: Low Brick School, okay, primary school, state, but it was like number two in the country. Yeah. So you know, people there was a waiting list for students to children to go to that school, to that primary school. So although some areas, you know, you, you go for the catchment, yeah, you're getting benefit of everything here including the food the country living yeah exactly yeah so, so i can see why it's so important for people to to get that property when they can that's right yeah and now with the uh lizzie line as you mm. call it yeah it's, it, things have become easier now for people to come out of london so um and i think covid led to that a little bit of that as well yeah Where people want to move out into you know green space now that people work from home a lot more you don't need to be in london or closer to London, you can live further away. Mm. So that helps as well. So we're now heading towards Cookham, another nice village, but does get flooded because it's not protected by the Jubilee River. So that's what you have to be careful about is the flooding there. Yeah, yeah, so this road will typically get flooded. <coughs> Especially in January, you couldn't, this was cut off. Oh really? Cookham was cut off. And it still happens? Of, uh, yeah, because they don't, they're not protected by yeah. the uh, Jubilee. That's so from, from this part onwards, mm. uh, they're prone to flooding. So it's good information to know. Yeah. And uh, some very expensive homes. You know, we're talking 20 million pound plus. Okay. Yeah. But they're hardly on the market, are they? Correct. No, once you buy... So that's why you don't buy, see them. You don't see them on the market. You have to really yeah. be connected here yeah. to realise if something's coming on or not. That's right. So if you go left here, but down here is where all the properties that are 20 million pound plus. Right, okay. Um, and they won't really come on the market. So here, typically the two million pound, one to two, will come and go really quickly. Mm. The, the, the greater than five million, yeah. minute, they don't hardly come onto the market. Well, that's where we come in. We sort of get to know everyone here yep. and ask them to let us know as soon as something's available. Yeah. And Indian cuisine Very famous, as well. very famous Malik's. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Award-winning restaurant. Um, friends of Heston Blumenthal. So yeah, he always gets a lot of awards. And spice merchants. Yeah, yeah. So... This is the village. This was all completely flooded and cut off in January of this year. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the water was all there. So we also have like a regatta here in the summertime as well. Cook and regatta. So we have festivals and things. So it's worth another visit when those festivals are here. Yeah, and we have here, you know, uh, to the hills that I walk up as well. So, you know, you're very close to the Chiltern Hills. Okay. Very, very close. Uh, in fact, some of my routes are when I go to Marlow, the Chiltern start from there. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot of nice cycling and walking routes, and if you're a runner as well, from around here. And obviously, the motorway, the M40, close proximity, M4, it's just on the M4. So, you can get to the north very quickly. Oxford's about, about 30 minutes from us. It's all farmland around here, so... Uh, so country estates? Yeah, exactly, yeah. People walking with their horses, that whole scene is around here, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever. Anywhere where we, we've been today, you will see people with horses. We have a lot of bridle ways as well, okay. for the horse routes. So this is like the scenic route towards Marley. Yeah. So, so we have two rowing clubs, so, you know, this area is famous for its rowers and swimmers. A lot of people in the Olympics representing Team and, GB. Okay, that represented Team GB. Live around you've got in the uh, A school as well. Yeah, yeah. That's typical around this area. We don't have no street lights, so at night time it's completely dark. I like that. Yeah. So where we live, so you can just see the stars. Right? Correct. Yeah. From my house, we could see the aurora when we had that. We looked out the window, out on the road. So you see, it's all farmland. Yeah. Oh, this is excellent. I mean, just imagine night time here. Yeah, so you away. You don't you don't get any light pollution. Mm. So I was in London earlier that evening, and then I went home, went to the garden, and I could see the aurora. Uh, you, you can also see the space, and here. you can see the space station as well. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, you can see that from our road as well. So it's very very dark. So uh, and and obviously here even more so. This is Marlow. We're now in Bisham. This is where the England football team trains at Bisham Abbey. Okay. Um, 
an England team prior to any tournaments. This is Marlow, famous bridge of Marlow. This is this is uh, Marlow Rowing Club. Yes, yeah, so this is the famous part of the Stone River Rowing Club. So bridged with Budapest. I'm sure someone will know us through soon. <laughs> they should, yeah. They should have it. Yeah. Oh, great little bridge. Yeah. So we are now coming to Tom Kerridge's territory for his restaurants. A great little church on the right. Yeah. Maidenhead was also the host for the Olympics. We had the rowing events there. So it was quite nice in 2012 with all the Olympic flags in yeah. Maidenhead. Um, this is the Milo High Street. Still with the bunting up. Yeah. Do they do anything Christmas here? Make it look. It's quite pretty, you know, but nothing, you know. You know. So this is Crafted Tap Room, which is very famous, owned by Heston Blumenthal's son. Um, and what's his name comes here? Uh, Ed Sheeran okay. comes to eat at Crafty Tap Room whenever he's around. The best chicken around anywhere. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's just absolutely full, always busy because of uh, Heston Blumenthal's son took over the kitchen area. So there's two elements. There's the Crafty Tap Room, which is the pub, and Ginger Wings because he's got ginger hair. So, so there's going to be a lot of things to eat. and Yeah, yeah you've got a lot of choice here. A lot here. of choice for food. Yeah. And this isn't even foodie... Uh, heaven that was weird in Bray yeah so uh, what a great village feel I mean we've got a great high street traditional yeah. looking everything's been looking clean and neat you also have a private cinema as well one of those private cinemas whatever they're called you know that chain of private cinemas IV's here as well yeah yeah you got Ivy Checkers which is a yeah Checkers one of Tom Courage's places this is a famous everywhere cinema Every man, is it called? Yeah. How big is that one? It's quite big, actually. It's quite nice. So this is obviously one of Tom Courage's places. He uh, owns the butcher's tap the whole town, yeah. isn't he? Really? Yeah, the butcher's tap. Okay. Which is uh, one of Tom Courage's uh, uh, places, which are going to come to you a lot. I'm very impressed. Actually, it's a very it's very traditional, but very modern at the same time. I mean, yep. You will find out just how quickly you can get to the motorway as well from now. At Kutcher's restaurant as yep, well? Yeah, he's got two here. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got two. Obviously, that's an Indian chef with a few restaurants. Yeah, he's got two around here. And we don't have the congestion charge. You know, we don't have any of that stuff going around here. Um, we don't have the 20 mile hour speed limits either that mm. imposed when you're in London. Um, you know, for me, I can be from my house to Kensington within 25 minutes. Yeah, so that's great. Um, but then it's a pain driving around London, <laughs> 20 mile hour speed limits after that. It's a pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, by looking at it, it looks very safe as well. Yeah, yeah, safe. Yeah. Again, you don't have to worry about watches getting stolen. Yeah. You don't have to worry about your cars, you know, whatever is going to happen to them. Here's the motorway. We're now approaching the A44, which either takes you down to the M40 and down back towards the M4. Okay. We're just going to go around. The Cotswolds is too far. So we've got the hills. Yeah. You want the hills? We've got the hills. You want the river? We've got the river. Mm. You want the houses, the old style houses, the country living village roads? We've got that here as well. On our way back now, we're just going to go through the final village, which is really nice, called Pinkley Green. Right, okay. Yeah. It's great to have your insight into these locations. Because obviously, just seeing it from one point of view, but yeah. from someone who's been here that long yeah, yeah. and enjoys it, really brings out you know that that heartfelt opinion about how what it's like to live here. Yeah, and this is a, another famous hill within Maidenhead, Winter Hill. There's a golf course at the top on the side, a Winter Hill Golf Course. We've also got cricket, another cricket ground around here. Village cricket at its best. So every weekend you can just five, ten minutes and you're yeah, in right. a new location. Yeah, yeah. But... exactly. Yeah. Again, this is a walking routes as well. All very, very 
we were close proximity of where we started this mm. video. Yeah. So it's a pub that I go to, really cool place. Golden Ball. Yeah, very nice. Again, very, very quiet, tranquil. Good pub gardens. We have a lot of nice pub gardens as well. Mm. Yeah. But look at the open space that you got. Great views to the right hand side again. That's what attracts the people as well. So you got a lot of people in high high tech sort of mm. technology companies and they're moving because this is also the Silicon Valley for Europe, okay. this area that we're in. Yeah. For if you're in tech space. Mm. Uh, startups and all sorts of different things from Microsoft to you know Oracle and then you've got startups um, they're all in this area uh, in this you know this area within the M4 corridor yeah um, and so you have you know we've got head, head offices of a lot of pharmaceuticals around here there's a lot of friends of mine that live here work in pharma okay. so again very a lot of professionals basically mm. live here very few business business people it's more professionals coming into the area so it's pinky screen, so yeah. So legend has it, this is where you used to get robbed in the old days. This is the horse back in yeah, yeah, this carriages area. where yeah, they yeah. used to stop you and uh, yeah, yeah, and ask you for your money. The other good thing around this area is that you don't hear the planes, you see the planes hmm. going to Heathrow, but you don't get any planes flying over your house. So, no noise pollution, no, no noise light pollution, no pollution, really. Yeah. On the odd occasion, if there's really bad weather and they have to divert, reroute planes, mm. but like I can sit in my garden and you never hear the planes apart from the private airfield behind yeah. our house. That's different. Mm. Oh, so we're going to go left here. So that's a very so, different situation. Obviously, we've got Henley to the right, yep. which we're going to cover in a separate video. Yep. And it's literally five minutes down there. But the beauty is also you, what the Henley Regatta would take some, yep. with lots of traffic then. Yep. But you avoid that as well this yeah. way. Cash, thank you so much for your time today and uh, showing okay. us around. It's been a real insight and uh, hopefully there's been some good knowledge for everyone else and they can see the sort of importance and the glamour and the uh, the area in more detail, you know. I, I finally really enjoyed it, really. Yeah, it's the helicopter there as well. And the helicopter's for you to take you back. Yeah. So any last words, anything else you need to... Not really. I think you need to come and experience it you know that this area definitely be spending more time here yeah and hopefully bring you some more more insights into some of the restaurants the pubs and the bars as exactly. well yeah so thank you again and uh, look forward to the next one hopefully the next next journey we'll let you know cool okay. thank Thanks. you